Today I'm going to do something I've been wanting to do for quite a while as a composter. I'm going to install a digester. This is the green cone digester. Um, and you can see basically this is what it sort of looks like if it was um, out of the ground, as it is out of the ground. So the bottom part up to about here will be buried in the ground and then the top part gets exposed above. And what's neat about a digester, because everything happens below ground, which filters out the odors and things like that, all the materials that you put in here will be absorbed into the soil about 90%, just like water would be. And what you can add to this are things like meat and dairy, bones, fish, things that you're not going to add to your above ground backyard compost bin. Um, it's double walled, so um, that kind of keeps the heat and the odors inside. Uh, unlike backyard composting, heat does play a big factor, in other words, the sun. So you want to pick a spot that's that gets a decent amount of sun as opposed to somewhere that's shady. So pick a spot that's that's sunny and also you want to make sure that you're not in an area that tends to flood when when you get a lot of rain in your on your property. So um, you know having this thing fill up with water wouldn't be such a great thing. So you want to make sure you're in a spot that's that's got um, some good drainage and drainage away from the cone. Um, you can keep adding to this. You'll generally add um, you know, pretty much whatever an average family of four can go in here. And maybe every year or two, the basket will get filled up to about maybe here with bones and things that don't decompose. And you'll have to pull the basket out and, and empty that out. But generally, it's there's no maintenance. You'll just fill it up. And if you operate it properly, uh, don't spill food on the outside, uh, things like that, and keep the lid on it, you'll uh, find that you're not going to really attract rodents to it. Um, so this is what again what it looks like assembled and in the kit uh, you're going to get instructions it'll go over all the different things that you're going to put into the composter the digester um, you can put your food scraps your fruit and vegetable waste you're not going to put the dried stuff you're not going to put the leaves and things like that they don't really need to go in here it's more the proteins and the organics that you're going to put in also included there's some starters there's some they're basically microbes that'll help the, the pile get going um, and you can mix it in here and sprinkle it on. It's like a, like a seasoning. Uh, you'll, you can just sprinkle that right on to the food that you're putting into the pile. It'll help get things going right at the beginning. And also, like, in the winter, and right now um, installing this, it's the fall, um, not a lot of activity is going to take place. So you might find that the, there's a lot of stuff that accumulates until the springtime. Uh, so you'll, you know, kind of, like, be patient with that. And we also include... A digester uh, material accelerant uh, that's geared towards pet waste. Um, pet waste in moderation can go into the digester. I don't think we want to fill it up with that, especially if you're going to be using the compost. Um, uh, you know, throughout throughout your on your property, you don't want to put anything in your uh, garden for edible crop if you're growing vegetables. So, the digester is probably a good place in moderation to put that pet waste. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to install the lid. That's the only real thing you need to do besides digging the hole. Um, it's pretty easy. just requires a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver. And it does come with these uh, little tools that you need to use to put everything together. Okay, so I'm going to put these things out in case if you're interested in seeing what's going on here. Okay, so... Um, Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to attach, thank you, we're going to attach the stopper, which is where the lid will lock in on the top. And we can do that with the Phillips head screws. And that goes down. And on the other side. Okay, so that's just going to keep the lid in place. Um, not locked, but it'll keep it in place. Now I have to attach the lid. So that's kind of easy also. So. They supply you with this little piece right here, and 
the this part gets attached I need a, my Phillips head again with these little I'm sorry I need a flat head with these little screws that come with these nuts so I'm going to switch over to my oh, flathead screwdriver and we're going to take this piece and basically you see that that lines up like that we put the screw on this side I'm gonna just basically do the same thing on the second side. So I'm attaching the screw and the nut inside there. There you go, nice and easy. All right, so that's in. <clears throat> now to attach the lid, so we've got, so far we've got this piece right here, that's where it's gonna lock in and it clicked a little bit. And if you come over to this side, you'll see this, we've attached this plastic piece to the lid. We're gonna attach the, the lid portion to the cone. Um, and the way we do that is with these pointy screws, so there's no pilot hole needed into the plastic. Um, so we're just basically gonna, with a little bit of muscle, get this thing to go into the plastic, the screw into the plastic, and once it gets going, it's threaded, it'll continue pretty quickly, okay? So, um, two more that I'll attach. I'm not screwing them all the way in because there's a piece of plastic that they want you to attach from the inside, which I will show in a second. And it just kind of screws into that material. Okay. So we basically have it, and this is kind of like the way it works like that. So I'm gonna take this top off so we get to the inside a little bit better. And you can see, if you look inside, you'll see the screws coming out. So now I'm going to install this little plastic plastic piece that kind of just lines up with the screws that are that have been inserted from the other side. Just like that. And then I'm going to go back to this side. All right, I feel it coming through there. just going to add some strength and rigidity to the this little clamp that will be opening and closing to put your materials in. So if you look at it now, you'll see that it's attached from the inside. And that is basically all we need to do to get our green cone set up and ready for installation. Okay, so now I'm going to install my green cone digester. And I've picked a spot, I think it makes sense, to have it near my... my Backyard composter, the earth machine, where I add my basic everyday um, food scraps. I've got my stockpile of, of uh, browns available, so every time I add my material, I've got that in there. And um, I've even got some grass clippings mixed with leaves that we just I collected. Actually, my neighbor Garrett gave me uh, so I can mix it in. That's like a perfect mixture because it's got the browns and greens kind of already mixed in there. Um, but I'm going to deal with that later. And you're not going to put that in a digester. You're just basically going to put food scraps and proteins and cooked food. You can put pasta and bread and rice and things that you wouldn't ordinarily put in the earth machine is what you can put in the green cone. Um, so the first thing to do with the green cone and in installing it, um, tell you the truth, dig in that hole. <laughs> Um, so when you dig the hole, you want to be careful um, to, to kind of like check out the soil. So if the soil is very dense and kind of like a clay soil, a little bit like what this is here, you may want to add some gravel at the bottom. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to sprinkle some gravel in the bottom just to help with the drainage. Um, 
what I did also before doing this, I took a bucket of water and I put it in there and it drained pretty quickly. If you put water in your hole, in the hole for your digester and after about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, it hasn't absorbed into the soil, you're probably in an area that, that really is not getting great drainage. So you might want to go a little bit deeper and add some more gravel, but I'm comfortable with uh, the amount of gravel I put in here because it, it did drain pretty quickly, even though it does look like it's, uh, it's like a clay soil. So <clears throat> I'm going to install the basket portion. And when we put the basket in the ground, we want to get it about an inch or so under the soil so that we can bury the, the green part, the green cone, when we install that. Okay, so we've got that on the ground. And the next piece is going to be the, the black cone. That's going to go on top. Okay, just like that. Nothing clicks in or anything like that. Um, I do have screws that are going to attach the black and the and the green cone together. Now, I want to keep in mind how I'm going to be opening this so that it's convenient when I come to the cone and I'm ready to add materials to it. I want to make sure that the opening is like this. Okay, so got it positioned. Um, Got my screwdriver. Need your Phillips head for this. And you're basically going to find that opening again. Here you go. into the green piece into the black piece okay just like that okay so uh, I will go back and I'll finish that that up in a little bit but what you're gonna do then is you're gonna you're gonna backfill you want to basically co cover about an inch high onto the green cone again this will keep the any odors from coming out of the bin and it's the proper way to install it to make sure water isn't getting into the side of the bin you might want to check it after it rains a couple times just to see if any of the soil has kind of like uh, washed away just in case you need to add some more And that's pretty much what our green bin is going to look like. Um, my neighbor, <laughs> leaning on my neighbor a little bit, it's nice to have good neighbors with tools. I borrowed his post digger. That helped a bit. Um, and my shovel here, pointy garden shovel, uh, worked pretty well. It took, took a little bit of muscle and sweat, um, so I'm not going to lie to you. So you got to be a little bit patient, maybe, uh, maybe get your landscaper or, or your kid to help you with that. Uh, so you do have to dig a hole, um, and then once I fill that, that in, I'm going to kind of like raise it up a little bit just to make sure water doesn't get in there when, when it rains. This is an area that does sometimes accumulate a little bit of water, but I don't think it, this area here is pretty secure from that. So um, I think we'll be pretty good. Um, so again, we're going to put in meat and dairy. Oh, Chase is here. Uh, yeah, sometimes we're going to put in a little bit of pet waste. Um, not not a heck of a lot, but we're going to put some in there. And um, most of the my, most of my veggies and stuff like that are going to go in the earth machine. And I'm going to stick mostly with the proteins and stuff that I don't put in the earth machine. I'm going to put in that. Um, and that's uh, pretty much how you get your digester going. So uh, give it a shot. I think it's uh, it's a neat option. Right now you you kind of have a, a bunch of different options for your solid waste these days. You can stick everything in the garbage and it goes to the incinerator or the landfill where organics don't decompose. It's a, it's a terrible way to get rid of your waste, actually. It's a third of the waste stream can be composted. So between a composter and a digester, we can take a tremendous amount of the waste from the waste stream and avoid sending it to the landfill. 
Um, other options these days, there are a lot of communities where you can collect your organics, including the meats and the bones, and bring a bucket to your recycling center every week, and you can drop it off there. There are communities where they're doing curbside collection, so people are taking a five-gallon bucket or what have you, and they're putting them at the curb, and the town's got to come around and get it. What I like about what, what we're offering here, these, these options, is that you can do it in your own backyard. Um, you want to have your compost bin because you want to use your compost when it's done. And you put the, the materials in here. It's much better, I think, than sending your, a, a truck around every day to pick up organic waste. So of all the options between putting the stuff at the curb or sticking it in your car and driving it or sending it to a landfill or incinerator, I really like these ideas. I hope you do too. And um, if you want to get started with uh, a digester and or a composter, I wish you a lot of luck. It's very easy. And um, if you have any questions, you can email us anytime and we'll take care of getting back to you right away. Thank you.